Since the reveal of Battlefield 5, we've learned a lot about what kind of content there is going to be on offer for us to play. We were told to expect another entry of War Stories, the single player campaign, a brand new take on the co-op for Battlefield with the introduction of Combined Arms, a fully fledged multiplayer experience in signature Battlefield style, and from EA Play just a few weeks after reveal, we learned the game would also feature a Battle Royale mode, now called Firestorm. However, since these features have been announced and spoken about, we've seen a gradual creep back on what will actually be included in the launch product. This has not only disappointed quite a lot of players, but many of them feel angry that they've been promised or teased features only for them to be delayed, and then delayed longer than the launch of Battlefield 5 because that got delayed as well. So in this video, I'm going to try and clear up exactly what you, the player, will be getting at launch for Battlefield 5, as far as we know right now, and what's been confirmed as post-launch content. There's two overall reasons why I'm making this video. First of all, lots of people are actually confused about what's shipping with Battlefield 5 and what isn't, and I can hardly say I'm surprised when the information really isn't that easy to find. And second, I want to give my opinion on how all of this has been handled. I spoke about this briefly on Twitter over the weekend, and I think it made for a good conversation to highlight, with so many different points of view actually being offered here. Okay then, let's start off with what is 100% confirmed coming at launch for Battlefield 5. Firstly, War Stories. This is the single player element of the game and features different settings for people to try and play through and experience. Split up into different chapters almost, we have the Prologue, Nordlies, Tireur and Under No Flag coming at launch. The prologue will introduce you to the setting of Battlefield 5. Nordlis tells the story of resistance fighters in German-occupied Norway and the fight to not only save their country, but their families as well. Tireur focuses heavily on infantry combat in France, where Senegalese units of the French colonial forces are told to fight and liberate the homeland, but a homeland that they've never seen before and Under No Flag tasks a young British criminal with the task of blowing up German air bases in the North African desert. Next up, we've got the standard multiplayer experience. This is Bread and Butter Battlefield, and it's coming with eight maps and eight different game modes to start us all off in November. Maps are as follows. Twisted Steel and Arras are set in the French countryside. Rotterdam and Devastation, highlighting the urban combat of early World War II, Hamada and Aerodrome, set in the North African desert, and lastly, Narvik and Fiel 652 in Norway, bringing in the Northern European Theatre. All of these maps set Battlefield 5, starting off in The Fall of Europe, the first segment of the Tides of War live service. Now, after launch, different chapters will focus the game on different locations, introduce new ones, and along with that comes more content like weapons, vehicles, gadgets, cosmetics, and even more. When it comes to game modes, we have Conquest, Conquest Assault, Domination, Frontlines, and Team Deathmatch as standard, and then included within the Grand Operations experience, we have Airborne, Breakthrough, and Final Stand. These will all feature at launch. An earlier mistake had Grand Operations down as a post-launch offering, but that is not the case. That will be included for the launch of Battlefield 5. Next, we have The Company. Here you'll be able to customise your soldiers and weapons with cosmetic items like skins and camos, clothing and more along the way, and the upgrade system for weapons which allows you to, when ranking up your weapons, change its base stats for different perks. The same system exists for vehicles in the game as well. Each of your class soldiers from both Axis and Allied Forces can be individually customised with different weapons, gadgets and cosmetics to make them look like your own soldiers, and more options will be coming after launch as well. And joined to the company, we have the Armoury, which will be the place you can either spend your grind currency, earn through only playing the game, or real money on cosmetic items if you so wish. That's your list for what is coming with the launch of Battlefield 5. This closely matches what Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4 offered at launch. However, more features and segments have been mentioned for Battlefield 5 since reveal that have now been pushed back or simply clarified to be post-launch features. Let's go through that list right now. 
Starting things off then, we have Combined Arms. This is the co-op segment of Battlefield 5. This was mentioned during the reveal of the game back in May, and very little was ever mentioned beyond that point, which looking back now was quite a telling sign. This recently was confirmed to be coming to Battlefield 5 after launch as part of the live service. The way this was done though was extremely sly in my opinion. The mention was just dropped onto the Battlefield 5 website about halfway down the page. In fact, if you now visit the Battlefield 5 website, which has since changed, you will be hard pressed to find even a mention of Combined Arms there at all. It's like it's been almost completely wiped from the game's list of features, despite being mentioned quite prominently during the game's reveal livestream. In the This Is Battlefield 5 article, however, you can find a paragraph dedicated to the segment where it now states the following. Experience combined arms during Tides of War, with continually expanding missions, challenges, and gear. Next up on the list we have Battle Royale, or Firestorm as it's now named. This segment is much clearer and featured good messaging from the start. From the moment it was announced on stage at EA Play in June, it was made very clear this was coming to Battlefield 5 after the main launch, and it's recently been outed that Criterion Games, based in the UK, will be developing the Firestorm mode. This leaves DICE more opportunity to finish polishing the main multiplayer aspect, which is of course launching earlier on. The mode's going to feature 64 players on the largest Battlefield map ever created, and its focus will be on squad play. Although I think it would be a massive mistake if solo play wasn't included as well for those gamers who perhaps have tighter schedules. Third on the list for post-launch content is vehicle cosmetic customization in multiplayer. Interestingly, this was also a feature that was absent from Battlefield 1's launch, and DICE appears to be repeating that here in Battlefield 5, which is slightly worrying. The feature was confirmed as a post-launch one during a breakdown of the Gamescom trailer posted on the Battlefield website. Coming after launch for vehicles is visual customization to it read. It is important to know at this point that the skill trees that you can traverse in the upgrades menu for vehicles will be available at launch, but the ability to add paint, skins and other cosmetics to your favourite tanks and planes, that's what's coming post-launch. So it is just the visual portion, but it's still a massive disappointment considering the reveal trailer for Battlefield 5 showed some quite detailed visual customization that we can expect. Now it's not coming at launch, so things are a little bit strange here. Next up, we have The Last Tiger War Story. This is the fifth story as part of the single player, a German army-driven story, which is really interesting in its own right, and DICE has stated that this is something that will come as part of the live service for Battlefield 5. No official reasoning has been posted, but to be truthful here, DICE never did say their entire War Story offering would be coming at launch. This isn't a re-clarification, it's just simply extra information at this point. A rather small but I think vital addition to Battlefield 5's multiplayer that has recently been outed as a post-launch item is Soldier Dragging. This feature was mentioned during the Battlefield 5 reveal and has been spoken about quite a bit since that point as well, but this is now something we're going to have to wait longer for. As I understand it, the feature is simply not ready to be released and it requires more work to finish. So perhaps when the reveal was happening, it was a feature the development team thought they'd have finished by that point, and along the line it was just discovered that more work was needed, maybe they hit a technical barrier. But with it being so heavily mentioned, it's been hard to swallow for the community that this quite vital feature is not coming at launch. The fifth item on the list is rental servers. The ability for any player to rent their own server, customize game settings and create their own flavor of Battlefield 5. This was briefly mentioned during the post-show livestream after the Battlefield 5 Beta Squads event that happened over the weekend and it confirmed it was not present at launch. I've got a clip here for you. Now, the big thing though that community members want to know about is I know, I know what you're gonna say. rented servers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, will there be uh, rent rentable servers so, in BFI? So speaking of the, from the community, there's something that we very much need and something that we very much want. And I know something that you're looking at more. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we know that, that the community wants this. Um, we, it's, it's still something that, that we, 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 we don't have much to share on that right now. But, okay. uh, and the reason is that we're still locking down 
core aspects of the game, still making sure that it's running the way that it should be and, and listening to the parts that the players really want as well there. Uh, but uh, but look, like it, we know it. We know that the players want this. They don't want the same experience they got in Battlefield 1. They want something deeper, richer. Uh, yeah. And uh, and it's the we want to do the right thing. Mm. But it's just maybe not uh, the right thing now. OK, all right. So. So hopefully, more info. In Put a pin in it. Hopefully, it's more info. It's not off the radar. It's yeah. on the roadmap. It's something we're thinking about. Okay. Um, well, I think that that that's important, right? So long as people know that it is like a something you guys are thinking about, and b on the radar, most importantly, yeah. Like, right? Yeah. <laughs> or excuse me, on the uh, on the roadmap. Now, it's not specifically stated that this will 100% be coming after the launch of Battlefield 5, but Andrew did mention that they understand players want something deeper than what they got with Battlefield 1, and it's on their roadmap, which is a good sign. However, there's nothing concrete here, which is rather disappointing. Small communities that run their own servers are one of the main reasons why Battlefield 4, a game released in 2013, five years ago now, is still relevant today. And the lack of proper tools in Battlefield 1 is one of the main reasons why that game had such poor player retention. People like to make their own flavour of Battlefield, and when they find it, if there's a way for them to keep having that experience every time they log in, they are going to keep logging in. I really do hope that DICE does truly understand the value of rental servers and what they can do to help Battlefield 5 in the long run. Let the community help the game by keeping it fresh, exciting and engaging. Just give us the tools to do it. And lastly, to finish this list on a positive note, DICE did confirm during their This Is Battlefield 5 video released a week or so ago that new content would be arriving in early 2019. A new location, Greece, will be added to the game, which is great to hear. Confidence in DICE's ability to deliver a live service is extremely low for Battlefield 5, considering how poorly the live service for Battlefront 2 has gone. So to hear talk already about new locations being added is something I think we can take a little bit of positivity from. Now, that's the complete list as it stands today, and as much information as I can find for you guys scattered throughout blogs, videos, and official posts. So, I'll now move on to my opinion here. The fact that I even have to make this video shows how poorly Battlefield 5 and its features is being handled at the moment. The fact that delaying certain key elements and the messaging of those elements like soldier dragging, an entire co-op mode and visual customization of vehicles were buried in blog posts and not made into topics in their own right is extremely worrying. At the moment, I don't believe EA wants any more negative coverage of their already extremely divisive game, and that for me is totally understandable. But if you don't effectively engage with the community, keep them informed and up to date, how can you ever hope to regain their trust? Trust is probably at the lowest point that it's been for the last five years in the Battlefield franchise, with the launch of Battlefield 4 being that previous low. And so far, I can see very little attempt being made to repair the damage, and instead, I'm just seeing a spew of other information emerging, hopelessly trying to get something positive to stick with the community. What EA should have done is stood up, been confident and delivered the news that items were being delayed with explanations to offer the community something tangible to digest. Instead, what's happened is these delayed features and their very hidden announcements are being taken as more ammunition to throw back at EA, and I'm hardly surprised that's happening. To solve this scenario, EA needs to come out working with the development team at DICE and establish a roadmap. The roadmap needs to include the features that have so far been delayed to post-launch and a time frame for which we can expect these features to land. Using many of these now delayed features in a marketing campaign for the game was, I'm sure, something they didn't feel was going to be an issue, as I think everyone working on the game assumed these features would be ready in time. But now they aren't, and a proper response is needed here. If something isn't ready to be added to the game, that's absolutely fine. Delay that section, but give us reasons why it's been delayed so that we can understand the situation. We want to understand the situation, and the reason a lot of people are unhappy is because they don't understand the situation. They aren't being offered anything tangible in response to their concerns. So, there you are. You're up to date with what Battlefield 5 is actually going to offer you as a buyer at launch and what is coming after. 
Now, as always, you're more than welcome to leave your own thoughts and opinions down in the comment section. I encourage you to do so on this topic, and let's see if we can make our voices heard here. Just remember, keep it civil. Thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications switched on. That way you won't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.